Trying to cut threads on my lathe has been the most frustrating and demoralizing activity that I've done so far. It's resulted in a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted material, and as you can see here, many broken carbide tipped bits. Uh, carbide inserts. Those are not cheap, by the way. Here are just some of the failures. This is all mild still, and I think this is the number one contributing factor to my failure, or I'm going to call it factor number one. Don't cut threads out of mild still. It just does not cut well, and it breaks tips. I'll get on to the other points in a second. We're going to cut 1.5 millimeter threads, which means we need to have the transmission in 1A, and we're going to use the gears 45 and 40 on the top and bottom, respectively. We've already got the transmission in 1A. Let me show you what it looks like taking these gears apart. The first time I did this, it took me close to an hour. I could not get the gears off. I had to use a couple of screwdrivers and uh, I think maybe a small chisel to be able to finally get everything apart. But now that I've changed these gears multiple times, they come on and off very smoothly. And I can do an entire gear change in probably two minutes. And that includes pressing out this keyed bushing with my 20 ton Harbor Freight hydraulic press, which I love. If you don't have a hydraulic press, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how you're gonna do this. If you've done it, please post a, re a reply video or at least put your comments below. I'd be happy to uh, let other people know how you're doing it without a press. I like to push this bushing out um, as little as possible so the next gear will key right on and then you flip it over and just go ahead and drive it back in flush and very short and painless. Anyway, reassembly is pretty much as boring as disassembly so we're going to make this go a little bit faster. Uh, the only tip I can give you is to have that, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, the, th the big metal thing that's horizontal, keep that in the horizontal position until you rotate it into the upwards position. It's easier to assemble everything if you keep it flat. This lathe uh, degrees the compound at 90, which is 90 degrees perpendicular to the work. So you need to set it at 61, which is actually going to give you a 29 degree cut. Don't ask me why that's important. Uh, check links in the comments and uh, other videos that will maybe describe that a little bit better. But 61, it's actually graduated in two and a half degrees. So it's somewhere between 60 and 62 and a half. So we'll call it 61 and a quarter. You can see there I'm using a 3 8 carbide tipped uh, brazed threading tool and it's shimmed. And I make this short thread by uh, feeding by hand. And this is factor number two why I have failures. Feeding by hand results in uneven loads on the carbide cutting tool and this is what breaks tools. Also, notice how short my stick out is on the material. It still flexes, which also adds to the uneven loading on the carbide tip and breaks tools. Always use a dead center or a live center if possible. For this short thread, I couldn't. And the reason I had to turn it by hand was because I needed that shoulder to be exactly where you see it. I didn't uh, have anywhere to coast because when you cut metric threads, you have to uh, always keep the half nut lever fully engaged. And you're going to see here how I get that done. So with a 5,000th depth of cut, I go ahead and make a pass. I shut the lathe off and coast out into this uh, groove, which is cut just for that reason. Then I back the cross slide out, not the compound, back out the cross slide, throw the lathe in reverse. Then we're going to coast to a stop over on the other side. Then we're going to uh, feed the cross slide back in, two revolutions out, two revolutions in. Then advance the compound by five thousandths, that's our depth of cut, and throw the lathe back in forward for the second pass. You can see in the formula at the top right, I found that by searching the internet. I don't know if it's the actual rule, but it worked perfectly for me, so I'll be using it. It applies to both metric and standard threads. Your pitch multiplied by the 0.866025 multiplier. All 60 degree V threads use that multiplier, and that gives me a final depth of cut at uh, 51 thousandths. I converted it to thousandths because that's how my brain works, and... Uh, I had very good success doing it that way. You could probably do less than 5,000 steps of cut. In fact, in the future, I think I might even do three. I would not do more than five. This material is 12L14, which is a leaded steel, and it just turns beautifully. Uh, everybody will tell you if you read online, 12L14 cuts really nicely. 
Apparently it does have a, a higher tendency to rust than other stills. Definitely not a stainless still. And uh, because it's a leaded still, it's not weldable. At least that's what I've read. But it works perfectly fine for my application. You see that I put a little bit of oil on there. That's just motor oil, nothing fancy. And uh, yeah, I was able to finally get some two successful cuts in a row. Uh, honestly, I think the biggest contributing factor was not using mild steel. I am going to try my hardest to never thread mild steel again. And here's the end result. My 14 millimeter nut threads right on there. No problem. Uh, a very, very small amount of wobble, but I'm, I'm still, you know, completely thrilled with my results and uh that pretty much sums it up thanks for watching this one guys post your questions and comments below helpful tips are always welcome don't forget to like and subscribe plenty more videos on the way so uh we'll see you guys in one of the next ones